Episode 211 How to Feed Snowflake After they got their phones, the twins continued shopping with Jacob. In the past, the sisters would only go shopping by themselves. With Jacob along, they seemed more excited and asked him for his opinions on the clothes they chose. Jacob never had any experience like this before. He didn't really have much understanding of what would look good and what wouldn't. Therefore, he answered them the best he could. Snowflake was rolling around in the space in the necklace, meaning that it was hungry. Therefore, Jacob went to KFC and bought two buckets of chicken before finding a corner to feed Snowflake. However, it was still hungry after eating the chicken. Within two days, Snowflake had already cost Jacob almost $100 worth of food, not to mention all the food in the fridge at his home that was also eaten by it. This made Jacob wonder if he could really afford to take care of it. Master! Jade and Julia walked out of the fitting room in matching clothes. Liam gave them a lot of pocket money every week. However, none of them had the concept of how to spend the money properly. They would buy whatever they liked, and the money would soon be all spent. Since Liam wasn't back yet, the sisters had little to no money left. Therefore, only Jacob could pay for those clothes. Jacob didn't mind spending money on Jade and Julia, since they had helped him out a lot in the past. Also, he usually didn't spend much money, and he still had quite a lot of money saved from the past. In contrast, Snowflake was going to consume more money in the long run and was more expensive than the sisters. Jade and Julia both held a few bags of clothes and were filled with excitement. Although Liam always gave them money to spend, he never went shopping with them. Comparing that with Jacob, they both thought Jacob treated them much better. There was a multiplex, an ice skating rink, and an arcade at the mall. It seemed like Jade and Julia wanted to experience all of them. But Jacob felt that if he brought them to the movies or the ice skating rink, it would seem like he was showing off to all other men. Therefore, he chose to bring them to the arcade. Although the sisters had stayed in the city for a while now, they remained curious yet cautious about everything. For example, they never dared to come to this crowded and noisy arcade before. But... They didn't have to worry anymore since Jacob was with them. With the tokens Jacob got for them, they were playing every single gaming machine. They were so excited that they looked like two kids who had never been to an arcade shop before, which was all true except for the kids part. Impressive! Cleared the level again! High score! There were a lot of people surrounding a gaming machine. Jacob walked over and saw a girl, who was dressed casually with gaming headphones on, holding a black sensor gun and shooting the monsters on the screen. As the virtual bullets were fired continuously, all the monsters that appeared on the screen were shot down. Yet the girl didn't get hurt at all in the game. She's a master of the game, Jacob thought. You win! Words of congratulations appeared on the screen. This girl cleared all the levels with the token she inserted from the beginning. Not a single scratch. No monsters were left behind. A perfect clear. Everyone behind her praised in excitement. This girl took off the gaming headphones and walked down from the platform. Then she turned toward other gaming machines. S Susan? Jacob almost thought something was wrong with his eyes. The girl who played the game perfectly and attracted many observers was Susan. Susan turned around and saw Jacob as well. She then noticed Jade and Julia who were playing on the basketball machine crazily not far from her. Why are you here? Jacob took a few steps forward and asked. What? Why can't I be here? Susan replied. Uh... Jacob didn't know what to say. I came here to buy some clothes and to relax for a bit. Susan glanced at him and took out a few tokens from her pocket. She inserted the coins into a car racing machine beside her and sat on the seat. 
Susan once again cleared all the levels. Jade and Julia, on the other hand, ran toward Jacob. Master, we used up all the tokens. From the look of it, even the simple game could cost them a dozen tokens. Jacob had no choice but to give them more money. Go and exchange some tokens yourselves. Thanks, Master. Jade and Julia ran toward the counter happily together. It seems like your weekends are quite boring as well. Susan, who was still playing the car racing game, turned her head and looked at Jacob. Jacob thought, You seem more bored than me. You even came here to play these games alone. He then looked at her gaming skills. It seemed like she came here often by herself to relieve her boredom. When he thought about it, it seemed like Susan, the inspector, was actually quite lonely. Jade and Julia, who just exchanged the money for more tokens, were interested in an airplane game. They sat down and started screaming while they played the game. Some guys were around them, wanting to strike up a conversation. However, when they saw how crazy the girls got, even though they were playing a simple game, they didn't know where to start. Will you have dinner with me? Jacob said to Susan, who was still playing the car racing game, and she turned to stare at him. Jacob suddenly realized how wrong that might have sounded, not to mention that the girl he was trying to flirt with was his own teacher. If you win, I'll have dinner with you. Susan threw two tokens toward Jacob. Jacob caught the tokens and sat down next to Susan. Then he inserted the coins into the machine. Challengers entered. Battle mode. Susan smiled confidently, but Jacob seemed calmer. The cars in the game started at the same time. Inside their screens, they could see each other's cars. Their movements were the same, as if they had practiced together before. More and more observers gathered behind them. Susan's face started to look more serious, yet Jacob remained calm. Jacob's car reached the end point first. As she saw second place showing up on her screen, Susan looked at Jacob, slightly surprised. She smiled gently and said, It seems like you were always bored as well. Jacob didn't deny it. Indeed, he used to come here a lot in the past because his parents were often not home. However, he stopped coming here after he got into university. Jade, Julia, time to go. Jacob called out to the sisters who were moving the joystick crazily and about to break the gaming machine in half. Okay, master. Jade and Julia didn't even bother picking up the rest of the tokens and stood up immediately as they started walking toward Jacob happily. Those guys who were waiting for a chance to talk to them were left speechless. That was Susan's first time having dinner with the sisters. Although they weren't against each other, Susan wasn't on the same side as them. Among the four of them, Jacob was the weakest. However, he connected everyone together. Susan quietly looked at Jacob, who was ordering the food, and suddenly remembered a criterion of the inspectors in the inspector system. It didn't matter who was stronger or weaker. Whoever could solve the problem smoothly was the most influential person. This Jacob, he has the talent of gathering masters around him and making them interact peacefully, Susan thought. Jacob didn't know Susan was thinking about him while he was ordering food. All he noticed was that Snowflake had started rolling around inside the space in the necklace again. Eat, eat, eat. All you know is to eat. One day you're going to kill yourself eating. Jacob thought and said to Snowflake in his mind. He refused to let it out and eat. If he did, there wouldn't be any food left for the four of them. As Susan noticed how Jacob was looking at his necklace repeatedly, she said... You need to feed spirit beasts with elixirs, or you can instill some nature essence in them. They will consume a lot more if they have to capture energy from ordinary food. Nature essence? I have only saved a little bit of nature essence for myself, 
I will have nothing left if I share my nature essence with Snowflake, Jacob thought. You took me out for dinner today, so I owe you a favor. Susan took ten red elixir pills out from her opal ring. Here are ten pills. Both cultivators and spirit beasts can consume it. One pill can last Snowflake for around one to two days, so these will probably last you about half a month. Thanks a lot, Jacob said. He was just worrying about how to take care of Snowflake. Luckily, no mortal saw what Susan did. Otherwise, they would have thought she was doing a magic trick. Don't mention it. Liam gave me these elixirs, but I don't use them for my cultivation, Susan replied gently. She then looked at Jade and Julia who were sitting together. She probably felt the growth in their power, from middle tier 7th level to low tier 8th level. She frowned slightly, but remained quiet. The sisters were both super talented, not to mention that they also had a perfect balance of the five elements. Compared to Susan, it was so much easier and smoother for them to cultivate and improve. This made Susan a bit worried. But, since Jacob was her assisting inspector, Jade and Julia should behave themselves. Master, you have to start instilling nature essence in Snowflake from now on, or you can feed it elixirs so that it can grow, Jade said as she saw Jacob putting the elixirs away. So I can stop feeding it once it is fully grown? Jacob asked them excitedly. No, it will consume more, Julia said as if explaining to a child. Uh, Jacob was left speechless once again. He pointed at the food and tried to change the depressing topic. Let's just go back to eating. Episode 212, The Nine Dragon Palace Although Susan had never talked to the sisters, they had a chance to get to know each other by sitting around the table today. It was major progress for their relationship, since Susan and the sisters were not social people. Susan was aloof with everyone, while the sisters were cold to everyone except Jacob. Snowflake chirped in Jacob's hidden space until Jacob tossed an essence replenishment pill for it to eat. Although the elixir pills Susan just gave him were not the best ones, it was not as cheap or ordinary as cabbages. It would be a test for Jacob to feed and nurture Snowflake properly. After one hour, the dinner came to an end. According to my intelligence network, the South Atlantic is gaining up on the North Atlantic. It's okay for you to tame a demon beast, but you must work harder on your cultivation. Susan advised him before she left. Got it, Jacob nodded. If you have any questions, come to find me, Susan said to him coldly before taking her leave. Looking at Susan's back, Jade frowned. Master, let us go home with you. I need to cultivate in a quiet place. You should go back to your place. Jacob waved off their request, mulling over the hidden meaning in Susan's words. Seeing his serious face, the sisters didn't bother him anymore. They lived at Liam's place, so they had a general understanding of the situation the clan was in. However, they didn't want to interfere as long as Jacob was safe. They rather enjoyed the peaceful college life they had now. After eating the essence replenishment pill, Snowflake slept in Jacob's hidden space while Jacob drove back to his home by the sea. Then, he let it out to play while he went up to his room to cultivate. There were two ways to unlock openings. One of them was to absorb the essence from nature. When the amount of the essence was enough, it would unlock the openings in the dragon core. The other one was to shoot the chaotic sword energy into the clouds and bring back the lightning power to force a breakthrough. 
Comparatively, the first method was steady and safe, building a solid foundation for himself. The second one could increase his strength greatly in a short time, but he would be in danger if the heavenly lightning bolts were accidentally triggered. After careful consideration, Jacob decided not to use the lightning cultivation method of the Sword Shadow Scroll until he has reached the third level. Having eaten an essence replenishment pill, Snowflake was more lively when it was released from the hidden space. It ran around in its original snow lion form in the spacious living room. Suddenly, Jacob's cell phone on the bedside table vibrated. He picked it up and saw Helen's number on the screen. Hello, Helen? We came out of the Dragon Palace today. We are by the sea and can drive you back to the city, Helen said over the phone. Okay. Eager to ask them about Kenneth, he immediately summoned Snowflake and put it in the necklace before walking to the seaside. Dracon and his family were waiting for him at the rock by the sea. How is Elder Kenneth? Jacob asked as soon as he got to them. We'll talk about it when we get home. Dracon waved at him. Both Helen and Sophie looked grim, and Jacob's heart sank at the sight of this. The car was parked not far from the sea. How is everything going for you? When they were in the car, Helen asked Jacob. It has been okay, Jacob answered. In fact, he had been worried about Kenneth these past few days, but he didn't want to bother them by going back to the Dragon Palace, as he knew that they were busy handling the situation. We were busy handling internal affairs and forgot to send guards for you. It's good to know that you are fine. Helen nodded with satisfaction. Sophie kept silent, gazing out the car window. The car drove swiftly and arrived at their home shortly. They entered the house and sat down on the sofa in the living room. Sophie looked pale. Although she didn't go to school these past few days, she was obviously exhausted after taking care of her uncle in the Dragon Palace. We declared to the outside world that Kenneth had passed the Heavenly Tribulation. In the past few days, I had to host the celebration ceremony while making plans with the core elders. That's why we didn't contact you, Dracon said. On one hand, they must gather the elders to discuss and make strategies. On the other hand, they had to celebrate while Kenneth was recovering from his serious injuries. Jacob knew they were exhausted, both emotionally and physically. Kenneth appeared in the celebration ceremony as a victor, and everyone thinks he has passed the heavenly tribulation successfully. Only the most loyal generals, soldiers, and core elders know the truth, including you, Dracon continued. He was frank with this information, taking Jacob as one of the core members of North Atlantic. Jacob nodded solemnly, understanding the situation. After the celebration ceremony, Kenneth's body recovered. He decided to leave the Dragon Palace and cultivate while traveling, Helen said. Cultivate while traveling? After a moment of consideration, Jacob said, He could slowly reclaim his strength and people will think that he's traveling around because he entered the heavenly dragon realm. Am I right? Good. You have a good understanding of the situation. Helen looked at Jacob with appreciation. Kenneth has decided to start again with his cultivation. He wants to travel back to the places he has been to. Hearing her words, Jacob's respect for Kenneth increased. He had lost all the cultivation strength he had accumulated for the last 200 years. His hope for the last 200 years was crushed in one night. Another man would have collapsed with the loss of self-confidence. But Kenneth has decided to start again with cultivation as soon as he recovered. It proves the saying that you have to fall back before you could advance. It's not a bad thing for him, Dracon said. Jacob nodded, imagining the scene when Kenneth left the Dragon Palace. He wondered what Elder Kayla was thinking when she looked at Kenneth as he took his leave. 
Besides Kenneth, we have another thing to talk to you about. Looking at Jacob, Dracon said abruptly, Oh, what is it? Jacob looked at him. Sophie also sat up straighter beside him. Kenneth's success at the heavenly tribulation is a great event among the four oceans. So, the four ocean dragon clans decided to open the nine dragon palace to celebrate it and encourage the younger generations to cultivate harder, Dracon said. Seeing Jacob's puzzled face, he further explained, The Nine Dragon Palace is a dragon palace of the prehistoric time, and it is the birthplace of the four ocean dragon clans. It's under the common management of the four oceans. It hovers in the void and shows up only when all four ocean dragon clans activate the array formations together. A godly palace in the void? Jacob was surprised. Dracon continued, The Nine Dragon Palace is activated every 50 years. It's only 30 years from the last opening, and we decided to make an exception this time to celebrate Kenneth's success with the Heavenly Tribulation. Was it proposed by the South Atlantic? Jacob asked. Yes. Dracon nodded. The South Atlantic is very sly. They propose to open up the Nine Dragon Palace, the ancestral temple of the Four Ocean Dragon Clans, to celebrate Uncle's success with the Tribulation. During the event, we will worship the ancestors and report his success to them. If the truth gets out one day, our clan would be guilty of deceit, Jacob said. Dracon's eyes lit up, surprised at Jacob's clear logic and judgment. You are right. We are at a disadvantage now since Kenneth has failed in the tribulation. We have to deal with it step by step. Anyway, the fact that Kenneth is good and healthy and that he is traveling will give them the impression that he has passed the tribulation and they will not make a move against us rashly. The most important thing right now is that we can't come back from the Nine Dragon Palace empty-handed. Dracon was a man of few words, but now his meaningful words and tone showed he had high hopes for Jacob. Jacob, you stay the night here since tomorrow we'll travel to the meeting spot, Helen added. Each time the Nine Dragon Palace opens, only eight people are allowed in there, which means each Dragon Palace sends two of their best young cultivators. We, North Atlantic, decided to send you and Soph to the event. Soph? Jacob was baffled since Soph, without her dragon core, was just an ordinary girl. Right, the Nine Dragon Palace only opens for six hours every fifty years. Except for the Grand Palace where we worship the ancestors, the other places are still unexplored. In this ancient dragon palace, there are many ancient treasures and precious herbs which are very rare and hard to find in today's mortal world. It will be an amazing opportunity for the younger generations since a top-tier elixir pill could help you break through three or four realms in one breath. That's why the four ocean dragon palaces usually send their descendants there, Helen said. Jacob nodded, understanding their intention. Soph was weak in cultivation, but as long as she was qualified to enter the Nine Dragon Palace, Dracon and Helen would get her in. Maybe she would be fortunate enough to find some way in the Nine Dragon Palace to grow another dragon core. If not, she would probably get other benefits. It was a rare chance that came every fifty years, and the leaders of the Dragon Palaces would certainly give it to their own children. After all, their children would one day inherit the throne. I'll give you specific instructions before you enter the Nine Dragon Palace tomorrow. It's late now. You both go upstairs and sleep, Helen said to Jacob and Sophie. Okay. Jacob looked back at Sophie before standing up from the sofa. They both walked up the stairs slowly. It suddenly dawned on him that Henry would also participate in the event.
Episode 213, Origin Dragon Palace. Back in her room, Sophie took a quick shower. During the past few days in the Dragon Palace, she had been served good food and clothes, but she felt exhausted. Jacob went in after her. Snowflake was rolling around in his necklace, signaling its wish to come out. In the bathroom, Jacob took a quick shower before letting Snowflake out. Although it was a spirit beast, personal hygiene was still necessary. Jacob grabbed onto the tiny snowflake and cleaned it thoroughly with shampoo and warm water. It was fortunate that it could change sizes. Otherwise, it would be a huge task to wash it in its original form, which was as big as a small elephant. In his pajamas, Jacob walked out of the bathroom, and Snowflake followed him out after flicking off the water on its body. Sophie was reading in bed. At the sight of Snowflake, she immediately called out excitedly, Snowflake! Snowflake jumped into Sophie's bed. After the shower, its long, snow-white fur held the fragrance of the shampoo. Sophie caught its front legs and lifted it up. Snowflake purred happily seeming to enjoy her attention. Mom has prepared another room for you today. She doesn't want you to be tired tomorrow. She turned to look at Jacob and informed him. Oh, okay. You rest then. Jacob understood Helen's intention, as the floor wasn't exactly the most comfortable bed in the world. Walking to the door, he called, Snowflake! Snowflake struggled out of Sophie's hands and jumped down the bed to follow Jacob. Sophie frowned a little when she lost contact with the fluffy lion, but she didn't say anything. Obviously, Snowflake was loyal to Jacob and wouldn't betray him because of Sophie's attention. I'll sleep in the next room, but I can let Snowflake keep you company, Jacob said at the door. You'll do that? Sophie asked, hopefully. Snowflake, stay with Soph. Jacob pointed at Sophie. Snowflake paused and understood his instructions. It trotted back to Sophie. Sophie's entire face lit up at Jacob's sweet gesture. After the exhausting stay at the palace, she needed this to get in a better mood. She opened her arms and let it jump into her arms. Snowflake, turn bigger. Patting its body lightly, Sophie gestured to show her intention. Being very smart, Snowflake understood her. It rolled and immediately turned into a chubby snow lion. Pleased, Sophie reached up and threw her arms around the neck of the big version of Snowflake. She used to hug onto a big fluffy toy while she slept. Snowflake's big fluffy body and smooth fur gave her great enjoyment. With its big black eyes and mild personality, she couldn't see a hint of a level 2 spirit beast in Snowflake. Jacob looked at her for a while as she cuddled up next to the snow lion. With a smile plastered to his face, he walked out of her room and shut the door behind him. Snowflake, you sleep on this side. Give me your paw and let me rub it. Out in the corridor, Jacob heard Sophie playing with Snowflake in her bedroom. In the next room, Jacob spent some time on cultivation before going to bed. Soph, Jacob, get up now! Helen called them in the corridor the next morning. Coming! Sophie, who had slept with Snowflake in her arms, ran out of her room in her pajamas. Snowflake shook its head and ran out of her room as well. Cultivating even in his sleep, Jacob immediately woke up after hearing the call. He walked out of his room soon as well. These are two robes for you to wear. You must show your respect and sincerity during the worship ceremony when you are in the Nine Dragon Palace and you can't wear your daily clothes. Helen handed each of them a robe. They went back to their respective rooms to change. Snowflake looked at Jacob then at Sophie, and finally followed Sophie into her room. Minutes later, they both walked out. Sophie looked like a traditional priest in her robe. It was Jacob's first time wearing such a robe, and he looked like a silly young priest, new to the world. 
There's only one hour until the designated meeting time, and we need to leave now. Today, you will need a lot of energy, and an ordinary breakfast won't do. Opening her palm, Helen revealed two red essence replenishment pills. These are two essence replenishment pills. Each of you takes one. Smelling the aroma of the elixir pills, Snowflake raised its head and looked at Helen with its innocent big eyes. Okay, you have one too. Helen took out another pill. Jacob and Sophie each took one pill and swallowed it, and so did Snowflake. It was Jacob's first time taking an elixir pill. He felt a surge of warmth rising in his belly and spreading to his limbs. With warmth all over his body, he felt an indescribable comfortable sensation. The dragon core in him shook slightly, as if it was on the verge of a breakthrough. Okay, we need to go now, Jacob. Put away your spirit, beast. Seeing a healthy glow shining on their faces, Helen knew the pills had been absorbed. Okay. Jacob beckoned Snowflake, and it immediately shrunk into its mini version before jumping into his hidden space. The hidden space was, in fact, a bunch of complex array formations filled with nature essence, and it was a more comfortable place for Snowflake. However, it wanted to come out frequently because it was curious, and the outside world tempted it. After taking Jacob and Sophie to the balcony, Helen waved her hand, spread out a picture scroll, and asked them to stand on it. Your dad is busy, so I told him not to come with us. When you come out of the Nine Dragon Palace, your dad and I will be there to pick you up, Helen said while she directed the picture scroll to rise slowly. Sophie nodded and looked down at this item. Well, it is the River Mountain painting. It has been a long time since the last use. This time, we'll have to go to Fifth Heaven and ordinary treasures can't fly there. Soph, you must stay close to Jacob after you enter the Nine Dragon Palace. Don't mess around, Helen instructed her. Got it, Mom. Sophie nodded seriously, understanding the importance of the day. Helen smiled at her before waving her hand upward. The spread-out scroll emitted seven colored light beams and turned into a rainbow. It flew up into the sky at dawn. The river mountain painting Helen used was undoubtedly an advanced treasure. It broke into the void and went above the ordinary clouds in the blink of an eye. Since mortals could reach the first four heavens, this fifth heaven was where the human cultivation world began. The immortals lived in ninth heaven and up, so the range between fifth heaven and eighth heaven was a buffer territory between the mortal world and the immortal world. The dragons could move under fifth heaven freely. According to Helen, the wood, water, fire, and earth elemental dragons could soar as high as seventh heaven, while the metal elemental dragons could reach the eighth heaven. When Dracon took Jacob to the sky to watch the process of rainfall creation, it seemed high for Jacob. However, it was only on the second heaven. The airplanes flew above the ordinary clouds, but it was still within the first heaven. Comparatively, fifth heaven was much higher. Even with treasures, the River Mountain painting, which was a super fast traveling treasure, it took them half an hour to reach fifth heaven. The seven colored light beams broke through a pale blue array formation and got through a thick layer of auspicious clouds. Fifth heaven! Standing on the river mountain painting, Jacob looked around and saw numerous green mountains. It was a celestial world. Standing in front, Helen checked the direction and steered the painting forward. The speed of the painting had slowed down and the seven colored light beams had disappeared. Flying above the mountains, Helen turned slightly and said to Jacob, Except for the Origin Dragon Palace, there are nine smaller palaces and rings around it. They are the branch palaces of the nine ancestors of our dragon tribe. There are four entrances in the Origin Dragon Grand Palace. 
Once you enter the Nine Dragon Palace, you will appear at the entrance in the north, since the North Atlantic Dragon Palace is located in the north. Okay. Jacob listened attentively, knowing that the trip was crucial and would probably influence the development of their clan in the next decades. This is a map. From an ordinary-looking ring on her finger, Helen took out a scroll. This map has the route of the Origin Dragon Palace and the information about the parts of the nine branch palaces that we have so far explored. Jacob took the map and opened it with nature essence. He found that the map was very detailed in some parts and vague in other parts. This map is the result of the efforts of several generations. It's very precious, and you must make sure it doesn't fall into other people's hands, Helen warned Jacob. Episode 214 the young elites. Jacob put the map into his hidden space. Since it was not food, he was sure that Snowflake wouldn't eat it. The Nine Dragon Palace opens every 50 years, and the cultivators must be younger than 100 years to enter it. Of course, it would be a waste of an opportunity to allow cultivators who are very young into it. Usually, the opportunity was given to those who have 50 to 60 years of cultivation experience, and that was why no one could enter the Nine Dragon Palace twice. Dracon and I entered once and didn't bring back anything extraordinary, Helen said with regret in her voice. Mom, I'm a lucky girl. I'll get good stuff this time, Sophie said enthusiastically. It's not as easy as you think. Although the Nine Dragon Palace has no traps in there, it's not absolutely safe. Helen looked at Sophie seriously, and the latter immediately shut her mouth. Helen turned to Jacob. The Nine Dragon Palace is protected by prehistoric array formations. Although the palace has been in desolation for thousands of years, the major array formations are still operating. The Origin Dragon Palace is in the center of the Nine Dragon Palace, while the Nine Small Palaces surround it. However, their positions are not fixed. Each time people go in, they would find that the positions of the Small Palaces have changed. Since the time interval is 50 years, each person only had 6 hours to explore it, and the four Ocean Dragon Clans don't share information. No one knows about the movement patterns of the nine small palaces. With the current information, no one can be sure if they move according to astrology or some other factor. Which branch palace you will enter and what kind of treasures you can get is all based on luck. Which small palace did you enter last time? Jacob asked. We entered Fifth Palace and got this River Mountain painting. Helen answered. Can we only take one treasure? Jacob asked immediately. No, you can take as many as you can. Except for the items in the Grand Palace, everything else in the Nine Dragon Palace is a legacy left by the ancestors of prehistoric times and can be taken with you. In fact, the Four Oceans came up with the solution of opening the Nine Dragon Palace every 50 years because we couldn't agree on a distribution plan of the fortunes. So, each time the Nine Dragon Palace opens, each ocean would send out two young cultivators to take everything they can with their luck and abilities. It seems that you and Dad were not very powerful at the time. Sophie raised her head and said. Helen smiled helplessly. Jacob saw her expression and knew that he and Sophie were even weaker. One of them had just reached the second level, while the other didn't even possess a dragon core. All in all, if you can take back three ancient treasures or elixirs, it will be a big success. If you get two, it will be good. If you get one, it will still be better than nothing. 
Helen turned serious and said, Okay, Sophie and Jacob said in unison. While they were talking, the river mountain painting had flown into the center of a round valley. Jacob looked down and saw that some people were already gathered in the meadow below them. Among them were Grandmaster Hank and Henry. Helen steered the painting and landed on the meadow slowly. Mrs. Helen! The representatives of the East Ocean and West Ocean came over to greet her. Elder Rose, Elder Gary, how are you? Helen greeted them with a smile. Since each ocean sent only two cultivators and one representative who led the way, there were altogether twelve people there. Henry's partner was a boy who looked a couple of years younger than him. He was probably Henry's little servant. East Atlantic's team consisted of one guy and one girl who were in their mid-twenties. They were holding hands and looked like a couple. West Atlantic's team was made up of one guy who looked twenty and one girl who was about eighteen. They looked like brother and sister. Mrs. Helen, you are the last to arrive. I thought you were too afraid to come. Grandmaster Hank glanced at Helen and said in a cold tone, Well, since South Atlantic is eager to open the Nine Dragon Palace, how can we not join in on the fun? Helen replied breezily. We proposed to open the Nine Dragon Palace so that the young elites of the Four Ocean Dragon Palaces can come and practice. But, from the looks of it, you are in dire need of talented youths, right? Grandmaster Hank looked at Jacob to Sophie and said sarcastically. Helen didn't want to argue with him. She looked away, pretending to have not heard his remarks. As the most senior and most powerful cultivator in the group, Grandmaster Hank stopped his offensive comments after Helen ignored him. He snorted disdainfully. Eight people were going to enter. Jacob and Sophie were respectively a second-level cultivator and a mortal. The couple from the east were young elites, and they both had reached top-tier fourth level. Their clan had already arranged for their dual cultivation. This time, when South Atlantic proposed to open the Nine Dragon Palace, they had eagerly agreed, hoping that this young couple could take this opportunity to gain another breakthrough. The siblings of the West were the oldest son and second daughter of the Crown Prince of the West Atlantic Dragon Palace. They had both reached the third level and were charging at the fourth level. Henry had reached the third level half a year ago, and his servant was just an assistant to him. Henry would enjoy all the treasures they get in the Nine Dragon Palace. Jacob and Sophie were the weakest pair among the eight cultivators, and probably even among all the participants in history. After all, the weakest participant so far was at the low-tier third level. That was why Grandmaster Hank mocked them, and Helen had no choice but to ignore him. This opening was only thirty years after the last time, and the four ocean dragon palaces had sent relatively young cultivators to participate. Twenty years later, the Nine Dragon Palace would open again and then again after another 50 years. It meant that any cultivators under 20 years of age could be able to enter the Nine Dragon Palace three times if they were given the opportunity. That was why they had all sent young cultivators who were all royal descendants. Well, it's almost time. The Nine Dragon Palace will show up any minute now. Sensing the undercurrent, Elder Rose and Elder Gary looked up into the sky and tried to smooth things over. In fact, the East and West were prompted by South Atlantic to agree to the extra opening since they stated that the reason behind the proposal was to celebrate Kenneth's success in passing the Heavenly Tribulation. The North Atlantic had no reason to say no. The truth was, they were at their weakest period. In the younger generations, they had no extraordinary talented cultivators. Sophie was lazy in cultivation and now didn't even have a dragon core. Jacob had just entered the world of cultivation, and others were just ordinary cultivators. Their clan would gain the least benefits from this opening of the Nine Dragon Palace. While the elders looked up, 
a huge palace that was bigger than a mountain appeared in the high sky. The powerful pressure it released made people want to bow at it. With a low murmur, Grandmaster Hank summoned a huge umbrella and blocked the overwhelming pressure temporarily. The palace was gray and ordinary looking, but the buzzing array formation around it was emitting black lightning flashes. The palace was almost as big as a city. A small-scale white array formation fell from the sky. In the four corners of the array formation were four circles that had different colors, red, yellow, green, and blue. So, Jacob, stand in the dark red circle in the north, Helen instructed. It was Sophie's first time witnessing the Nine Dragon Palace, and she was stunned by it. Jacob pulled her into the red circle. Standing in the green circle opposite them, Henry glared at Jacob. Then he turned to Sophie and said, Soph, you are mine. With a white flash, the array formation on the meadow vanished. Episode 215, The Tower of Heaven When the dizziness passed, Jacob and Sophie found themselves in a wasteland. Everything was engulfed in a white mist, as if they were in a forest early in the morning. The air was humid and foggy. They couldn't see anything beyond two meters. Dressed in thin robes, they felt cold Jacob circulated the spirit concentration scroll to keep warm, but Sophie, without her dragon core, was shivering. Jacob reached out and held her hand. A surge of warmth traveled from his hand into Sophie's body. Realizing that Jacob was trying to keep her warm, she nestled her hand into his palm more securely. In this unfamiliar environment, Jacob didn't dare to move aimlessly. Standing where he was, he took out the map Helen gave him and began to study it. Looking up at Jacob, Sophie took out a mini compass from her bracelet and pointed. This is north. Jacob turned to look at her with a smile, happy with her contribution. He set the map in the right direction and found that they needed to move south, since Helen had told them that the place they landed on was to the north of the Origin Dragon Palace. Follow me. Jacob put away the map and pulled Sophie along. Sophie stumbled along with him like a clueless puppy. It wasn't really her fault. Without her dragon core, she was no better than a human, and this environment was clearly not designed with humans in mind. Soph. Jacob stopped abruptly and turned to look at her. Yeah. Sophie looked up. As you have seen, the cultivators who have entered the Nine Dragon Palace are all selected elites of the Four Ocean Dragon Palaces, and it's a rare opportunity for us to come here, since this place only opens every fifty years. With his eyes locked on her, Jacob said the words with emphasis. Sophie nodded when Jacob continued. I'm hoping that we find some godly elixirs to help your uncle recover his cultivation strength. We only have six hours to do this. I think that if we work as a team, then we can achieve this. It's not only important for your uncle's recovery, but will also be crucial to the power balance between the South Atlantic and North Atlantic. Jacob looked very earnest. He explained his whole plan to Sophie in hopes that they would make a good team. Sophie is generally not very serious about all things dragon-related, as she quite likes her life on Earth. However, she loves her uncle dearly, and, if given the chance, would do just about anything to help him. Sophie looked at him with a determined expression and silently promised herself to not leave here empty-handed today. Let's go. Jacob tugged on her hand and continued forward. This time, Sophie didn't wait for him to drag her along. Instead, she quickened her steps and followed him closely. She turned to look at Jacob and found his focus on the surroundings. 
She was happy that he was not only there with her, but also taking her uncle's recovery and his role in the clan so seriously. Jacob consulted the map while silently counting his steps. He estimated that one step covered a distance of about 50 centimeters, roughly speaking, and the product of 50 centimeters and the number of steps would be the distance between the initial position and the origin dragon palace. This data may not be useful for this trip, but it would be important information for future use. Sophie didn't know what Jacob was mumbling about. If she had known that he was estimating and measuring the distance, she would have admired his attention to detail. The atmosphere was gloomy while the dense white mist reduced their visibility. Sophie clutched Jacob's hand and leaned closer to him, absorbing the warmth from his body. Soph, check if our direction is right, Jacob said. Okay. Taking out the compass, she checked carefully. We're still walking to the south. We have walked 12,859 steps now, which is about 6,000 meters. Jacob calculated in his mind. With a walking speed of five kilometers per hour, we've spent about one hour here already. Of the six hours allocated to us, one hour has passed, Jacob told Sophie. Really? One hour already? Sophie was astonished. Let's hurry. Jacob began to jog, dragging Sophie along with him. While jogging, Sophie put away the compass, still surprised that one hour had passed already. They needed to save their energy in the Nine Dragon Palace, but time was more precious. With the ancient array formations still operating in the Nine Dragon Palace, they couldn't fly using treasures here. Even walking was consuming their nature essence. Sophie got the nature essence transferred to her from Jacob and didn't feel the loss, but Jacob was conscious that his nature essence was dwindling with each step they took. The ordinary-looking wasteland was not ordinary at all. Jacob had been absorbing the essence from this space and turning it into his own nature essence. Otherwise, he would have been exhausted by now. That was why the four ocean dragon palaces used to send cultivators who were between 50 to 60 years old instead of younger cultivators, even though the younger ones could enter twice. After all, the weak cultivation strength of young cultivators was not even enough to be consumed by the wasteland in the Nine Dragon Palace. While they were running, Jacob felt like his nature essence was pouring out like the water in a waterfall. His nature essence was not abundant to begin with, and it was now almost running out. Jacob stopped immediately and took several deep breaths. He calculated and found that they had just run about 200 steps. What, you're tired so soon? Sophie looked back at Jacob in surprise, since she knew his physical strength was way better than hers. Jacob released her hand. Try and run by yourself. Running's not difficult for me. As a decent runner, Sophie swung her arms and began to run. Six steps later, she felt a heavy pulling force on her legs. She lost her balance and fell to the ground. Seeing her awkward posture, Jacob couldn't help but laugh. He walked over and pulled her up. Sophie's eyes widened, finally realizing that Jacob had been dragging her along with his nature essence till now. Let's continue. Jacob said mildly as he grabbed onto her hand. Sophie nodded and blushed. She even felt like her hands were hot. Sophie turned to look at Jacob while walking. Do, do you think I'm a burden? What? Jacob froze and then said to her, No, of course not. You know how to read a compass, right? Red-faced, Sophie pursed her lips and gave him a timid look. Is that all I can do? Let's move on. Burden or not, you're with me today. Jacob quickened his steps and tightened his grip on her soft hand, dragging her with him. Sophie slowed down a bit and looked at Jacob's side face, suddenly feeling touched. The white mist surrounded them, and the visibility there was only half a meter. 
If it were not for the compass, Jacob would have thought that they were totally lost. They were wondering how much more distance they needed to cover when the black grand palace made of huge rocks appeared before them. Even though the tower was in a cylinder shape, the foundation was in a square shape. They looked up and found that the top was not visible in the white mist. The Tower of Heaven. As it was called on the map, the huge tower made with huge crude rocks greeted them with a surge of prehistoric essence. Sophie tugged at Jacob's arm and leaned toward him. How much time is left? We have walked 16,389 steps, which is about 8,000 meters. It took us about one and a half hours, Jacob answered her. Then we still have four and a half hours, Sophie nodded. She realized she had been walking with Jacob, hand in hand, for more than 10,000 steps. She released her grip slightly, but seeing the black palace, she became afraid and grabbed Jacob's hand again slightly embarrassed. Oblivious to her little movements, Jacob opened the map and began to study it. The entrance was a bit further from where they were. After entering the palace, they could follow the route that was drawn by earlier explorers and enter the core region of the Dragon Palace. Let's go! Putting away the map, Jacob pulled Sophie toward the entrance of the Grand Palace. Episode 216, Time is Ticking Sophie followed Jacob closely through the black gate in the east of the palace and into a dark and gloomy tunnel. Jacob released a mass of fire which he made with his fire elemental sword energy. It was used as a torch to illuminate the path. The black tunnel was made with unknown black rocks. Although there were no skeletons or spider webs, the echoing of their steps and the reflection of the fire made Sophie nervous. Jacob consulted the map at each turn. Although there were no traps here, one wrong step could cost them precious time. However, in the palace, the suppression they felt out in the wasteland disappeared, which meant that the black rocks could block the pulling power in the wasteland. I'm afraid, Sophie said timidly after a while. Hey, it'll be fine. We have the map with us, Jacob answered, squeezing her hand gently in reassurance. The map showed that they were now only three turns away from the Grand Palace. If we can't get out, we'll spend our lives meandering in the palace, right? Sophie said. You're a dragon, princess. Where's your courage? Jacob was about to say in order to encourage her. However, when he looked at Sophie's face illuminated by the fire, he saw her fear as clear as day. He comforted her in a gentle voice. We are fine. If there were any dangers here, your mom would have warned us. Okay. Sophie answered hesitantly, leaning closer to him. They turned left, walked down a slope, then went forward and turned right. A brightly illuminated Origin Dragon Palace suddenly entered their view. The black stone statue of the Origin Dragon, which was nearly 100 meters high, stood majestically in the center of the Grand Palace, emitting glittering black light. In its 18 black arms were holding 18 different weapons, and its mouth held a huge gold bead. It was this gold bead that illuminated the whole Grand Palace as if it was daylight. They walked around the stone statue and found four incense desks in four corners around the statue. The desks in the south, west, and east all had three burning incense sticks on them. It meant that the other three teams had been here earlier than them. Judging from the remaining lengths of the sticks, they knew Henry of South Atlantic had been the first to reach the place. Let's hurry up and light the incense sticks, Sophie urged. Okay. 
Jacob took her back to the incense desk in the north. Picking up an incense stick emitting nature essence, he lit it up with fire-style sword energy before respectfully sticking it into an ancient-looking incense furnace. The incense stick burned slowly, emitting a fragrant scent. Obviously, in the Origin Dragon Palace, even Henry didn't dare to set a trap for them. Jacob consulted the map and took Sophie to the main gate of the Grand Palace. But Jacob was baffled. Looking from the outside, the palace had its tower top up into the depth of the mist, and he guessed its height was taller than a hundred meters. But in the Grand Palace, the dragon head of the Origin Dragon statue nearly touched the ceiling of the palace, which meant that there should have been several or dozens of levels. However, while he walked from the northern entrance to the Grand Palace, he had not found any path or any ancient delivery array formation leading to the higher levels. But he had no time to mull over his suspicions. Besides, Jacob and Sophie, who were really weak, couldn't explore the palace. Jacob put aside his bafflement and walked toward the main gate facing the stone statue. The gate emitted a faint white light screen. The moment they went through the white light screen, their vision suddenly cleared. The gloomy mist vanished, and in its place were mountains, rivers, and meadows. But they were not ordinary mountains, rivers, or meadows. All kinds of unknown celestial herbs emitting intense essence were spread all over the plain, and celestial water flowed in the rivers with surging essence. The mountains were so high that each of them was at least thousands of meters tall with their tops out of sight. Prehistoric land. This was the true prehistoric land, a piece of land that was there when the world was just created. Different from the prehistoric land in the legends, there were no spirit beasts or demon beasts. There were only lively, abundant celestial herbs all over the mountains and plains. Seeming to have sensed the nature essence in the air, Snowflake chirped in Jacob's necklace. He suddenly remembered that Snowflake had come in here with them in his necklace. He opened the hidden space and let it out. Snowflake made a roll in the air, turning into its snow lion form before landing on the ground. Cultivators liked places with intense essence, and so did spirit beasts. The intensity of the essence was hundreds and even thousands of times of that in the hidden space. Snowflake ran around Jacob and Sophie in extreme happiness. In fact, the high intensity of essence in prehistoric times was the main reason there was a large number of spirit beasts and demon beasts at that time. As a spirit beast, Snowflake was really at home here. Lifting its head, Snowflake roared in exhilaration. Putting away the map, Jacob looked around the beautiful scenery of green mountains and rivers. They were now out of the Origin Dragon Palace, and the next step was to find one of the nine branch palaces. However, the branch palaces had no fixed positions. They could only rely on their luck to find them. When Helen and Dracon were here, they had worked hard and were lucky enough to find the fifth palace. With much weaker physical strength and cultivation strength, and only four hours at hand, it would be hard for Jacob and Sophie to find any of the branch palaces by foot. Soph, you tell me which direction we should go. Jacob turned to look at Sophie. Uncertain, Sophie closed her eyes and turned around in circles before pointing in a direction randomly. She opened her eyes, saying, Okay, this direction. Okay. Without further ado, Jacob pulled her toward the direction she pointed. Sophie was a bit moved by Jacob's trust and closely followed him in the random direction they had chosen. Stepping on the rare and precious herbs, Jacob felt a bit guilty. His mission now was to find a branch palace. If they couldn't find one, they would pick some of the spirit herbs as compensation. Anyway, his hidden space was as big as a room. A room full of different kinds of celestial herbs would be valuable for making elixirs. 
Snowflake rolled and tumbled in the meadow, without the dignity of a snow lion. It looked just like a large dog. When they reached the end of the plain and came to the foot of the nearest mountain, Sophie was fatigued. Under the power of the ancient array formation in the palace, they couldn't fly on a sword, and walking was their only method of transportation. To find a branch palace, they must climb to the top of a nearby mountain so that they could have an overview of their surroundings and probably spot a branch palace up there. Thinking of climbing up the mountain, which was at least 400 meters high, red-faced Sophie began to pant. Snowflake ran around Jacob and Sophie, wagging its head and tail happily. Damn you, Snowflake! You are so energetic, but I'm dying of exhaustion! Sophie sighed as she pets Snowflake on the head. The demanding dog laid down on the ground and exposed its belly, inviting Sophie to rub it. With an exasperated laugh, Sophie rubbed its belly and rolled her eyes at the so-called spirit beast's antics. Suddenly, an idea dawned on Jacob. Soph, you can ride Snowflake. Huh? Sophie didn't understand. With its size, it can carry you with ease. Jacob squatted before Snowflake and patted its face, getting it to stand up. Are you sure I can ride it? Looking at Snowflake, who was like a huge dog, Sophie hesitated and asked Jacob. The lazy Snowflake has been eating without working. Now we have some work for it. Jacob walked over and held down Snowflake's neck before helping Sophie to get on its back. At first, Snowflake was a bit reluctant and began to bend its legs. But one pat on its rump from Jacob made it immediately stand up. Obviously, Snowflake needed some urging to do its work. Sophie had ridden horses in the park, but she had never ridden a lion. Sitting on its back, she felt a bit nervous. With a height of nearly one meter, Snowflake was as big as a pony. Let's get up to the mountaintop. Jacob gently clutched the mane beside Snowflake's ear and led it up the mountain as if he was walking a horse. With the Dragon Core and Sword Shadow Scroll, his physical strength was enough to sustain him, as long as the land here didn't suck out his nature essence. Snowflake, go! Sitting steadily on Snowflake, Sophie treated it like a horse. Snowflake looked morose, seeming regretful of its decision to come out of the hidden space. There was no clear path on the mountain to climb, and this made climbing it especially difficult. Time ticked away, and Jacob felt the pressure. However, he could do nothing about their slow speed. In prehistoric times, people had to rely on their natural strength, instincts, and possible innate powers, since no one could cultivate them at that time. The people born in prehistoric times had climbed the mountains step by step, like he was doing right now. They definitely didn't fly on swords. Sitting on Snowflake's wide back, Sophie picked some red, green, and blue fruits from the low bushes and fed them into Snowflake's mouth. When they finally reached the top, Jacob calculated silently and found that another hour had passed. In the past hour, he had quickened his steps almost to a jog, and even Snowflake had begun to trot under his urging. The trees on the mountaintop were not dense, Standing on the highest rock, Jacob looked into the distance. Around him were vast stretches of plains and tall mountains. Riding on the back of Snowflake, Sophie came to his side. She widened her eyes and also looked carefully for the clues of branch palaces. Over there! Over there! Sophie suddenly yelled in joy. Jacob followed her gaze and saw a black spot in the center of a faraway plain. It's too far. We can't reach it in time at our current speed, Jacob said. Disappointed, Sophie began to search other places. In this big world, the nine branch palaces seemed very tiny. Even with an eagle eye view, they were just some small black dots if they were hidden behind the mountains. 
Jacob circulated the nature essence and concentrated it in his eyes. He had a clear view of grasses in the area several hundred meters around him and could make out things several miles away. Over there, Jacob pointed to the direction ahead on his left and said, Episode 217, The Second Branch Palace Sophie widened her eyes and looked hard, but couldn't see it. However, Jacob had a clear view of the branch palace concealed at the foot of a mountain. Although he could only make out a pillar, he was certain that it belonged to a branch palace. Okay, let's go there. Sophie couldn't see it, but she trusted Jacob's acute sight. Jacob calculated in his mind. This was the closest branch palace they could see. Although he had spotted a branch palace even farther than the one Sophie found, time was not on their side now. It would take them one hour to get down from this mountain, and another two hours to reach the branch palace concealed behind the foot of the mountain. There would be almost no time left for them to search for treasures. He understood why Helen had told them that it would be a big harvest if they got three treasures. It would be great if they got two, and even one would be a success. Snowflake, let's get down from the mountain. Jacob patted its head. With a roar, Snowflake jumped down the mountain swiftly with Sophie on its back, dodging the trees on the mountainside and showing great agility. Jacob found it hard to keep up with it. Suddenly, Snowflake roared and leaped up over a huge rock blocking its way. In the air, Snowflake burst out flames from its paws. Carrying Sophie on its back, it didn't drop onto the ground. Instead, it flew up. Innate power. Snowflake's paws weren't moving as if it was standing on the ground. At first, Sophie seemed startled. But soon, she began shouting in joy. Snowflake! Jacob clapped his hands. High up in the air, Snowflake was awe-inspiring. Pedaling its paws, it returned and landed on top of a rock. Oh, Snowflake, I love you so much! With her arms around Snowflake's neck, Sophie almost started rolling on the ground with it in her arms. Similarly, Jacob was also surprised to find that Snowflake was able to fly. Overjoyed, he patted its back and got on as well. Snowflake, let's see if you can do it. Jacob patted it again. Snowflake let out a lasting howl while exerting force through its limbs. Again, flames enveloped all four of its paws and it flew high up in the air unwaveringly. It seemed effortless for Snowflake to carry both Jacob and Sophie at the same time. Moreover, its four paws looked like they were on Hot Wheels. Flying was its innate power. Snowflake is so cool! Sophie couldn't help but lean over and hug Snowflake's neck tightly again. All right, Snowflake, fly ahead! Jacob gently patted again while pointing forward. Snowflake was very obedient. It immediately spread its limbs and flew rapidly forward. They realized that the distance that they originally had to travel by foot was now achievable by Snowflake's flight ability. Even though its speed could not be compared to treasures, they no longer needed to get over high mountains on foot. More importantly, it would save them a lot of time and energy. Riding on Snowflake's back, Jacob and Sophie enjoyed the beautiful sceneries as the nature essence filled air gently blew at them. It was such a marvelous feeling. Moreover, seated in the front, strands of Sophie's hair fluttered in the wind and they continued to tickle Jacob's cheeks. As her back kept on touching his chest, Jacob couldn't help but sense a hint of romance. Sophie felt completely at ease 
and was silently appreciating the vast prairies and the continuously rising and falling mountains below her feet. Jacob quietly held onto her by the waist to prevent her from falling off Snowflake's back. Extremely delighted, Sophie even opened up her arms to feel the breeze head on. Nervously, Jacob held onto her waist tighter. For a second, he felt like their poses were extremely familiar. We're here! Snowflake, descend! Seeing that the branch palace was now right beneath them, Jacob quickly gave out the order while pressing down on Snowflake's back with his palm. Proudly, Snowflake let out a couple more roars and directly descended. The Black Palace was similar to the Origin Dragon Palace as they were both built with black-colored stones. Right before the door, there were two stone statues holding various weapons. They each had the body of a dragon and head of a jackal. The Second Palace. This branch palace that was partially hidden away by the foot of the mountains was the Second Palace. Just from studying the two stone statues, Jacob could tell immediately that various offensive treasures were awaiting them inside. Snowflake, go in. Jacob opened the hidden space in his necklace and asked Snowflake to crawl in. This branch palace was the closest to the Origin Dragon Palace, so they were expecting Henry and the others to be in here as well. Jacob did not want them to see that Snowflake brought them here. Come on, let's go in. Jacob dragged Sophie and stepped inside the palace. Different from the halls in the Tower of Heaven, this palace did not give off an eerie vibe as it was spacious and bright. Jacob and Sophie directly walked into the main hall. This main hall was in a square shape. Its width and height each were a few hundred meters. Instantly, Jacob and Sophie saw countless treasures flying above them over a white light veil. The treasures were not fancy looking and seemed rather dark and dull. However, while floating in midair, they gave off an incredibly intimidating sensation. What looked good was not necessarily powerful. Every one of these primitive-looking ancient treasures could be more powerful than the combination of a dozen top-tier treasures. At this moment, underneath the sea of treasures, Henry and his servant, the couple from the East Atlantic, and the siblings from the West Atlantic were all striving to acquire the treasures they desired. There were at least a hundred of those treasures dancing in the air. Therefore, they did not have to fight over them. All they needed to do was choose the ones they desired and focus on obtaining them using their nature essence. The arrival of Jacob and Sophie surprised the other teams. It seemed like the others believed that Sophie and Jacob were too weak and might not even be able to walk out of the Origin Dragon Palace, let alone get to the Branch Palace. Right now, they were all releasing their nature essences and working on obtaining the primitive-looking treasures. Henry cultivated three-star destruction scroll. His palm emitted a dash of blue light, and this light formed a rope. Currently, it is tightly wrapped around a black axe that was high up in the air. Next to him, his servant had gotten a hold of a black jade flute. Dear self, what a lucky idiot your prince must be for being able to bring you here. While exerting his nature essence to acquire the big black axe, Henry turned and said to Sophie and Jacob. He couldn't help himself from spewing vicious remarks when he saw Jacob holding Sophie's hand. Henry, one more word from you and I'll knock your front teeth out. Sophie was furious as she shouted back at Henry. Henry paid no attention to Sophie's anger. The most important thing right now was acquiring the treasures. He believed that there would be plenty of chances for him to deal with Jacob in the future. Jacob smirked faintly as he shot out sword energy from his finger. The gray sword energy rolled into a ball in the air and hit right into the blue light that was being emitted from Henry's palm. With a fizz, 
the blue rope made of nature essence instantly fractured, and the black axe, which was making its way to the edge of the white light veil, went back to its original position. The sword energy was capable of cutting through all five elements. Hence, the ball that was made of concentrated sword energy was undoubtedly able to sever Henry's nature essence. A whole hour of Henry's effort was destroyed. Henry, who was elegant and gentle-looking, had now become enraged. He glared at Jacob and yelled, How dare you! Jacob did not flinch. After all, he was not afraid of Henry, who was a few years younger than him. He remained calm and pulled Sophie back to his side, stopping her from going forward to confront Henry. Clenching his teeth and shaking his hand, Henry's hatred towards Jacob was apparent as he took out a golden spear. Although he was young, he already had his own natal treasure. Episode 218, The Battle with Henry Prince, we must focus on acquiring treasures. We can deal with them later. Henry's servant urged promptly. If I don't defeat him now, he'll keep interrupting for sure. You can focus on obtaining the treasures. I will take him on. Holding onto the spear with one hand, Henry waggled his spear and prodded it right toward Jacob's face. The golden spearhead was agile like a wiggling viper, leaving Jacob's vision blurred and dazzled. Moreover, on the surface of the pole arm, there were five coiled dragons carved onto it. Its appearance alone indicated that it was a very powerful weapon. Watch out! Sophie warned Jacob as she gasped. Jacob took a stride and released five sword energies from his hand. They were like five small missiles bombing onto Henry's spear. At the same time, he pushed Sophie away so that she could stay farther away from the battle. Is that all you've got? Henry simply switched from holding the spear with one hand to with both hands, and his golden spear did not take the least bit of damage. His movements were agile and varied greatly. He was coming at Jacob ferociously and violently, a good indicator of quite a few years of training. As the future of South Atlantic Dragon Palace depended on him, even if no one were to discipline him in his daily life, he would never neglect his cultivation and practice of weaponry skills. The cultivation technique he had was the best in the South Atlantic, and so were the spear techniques that he practiced. The spear prodded into Jacob's shoulder before abruptly changing its course and almost slashing Jacob's throat. Spears were regarded as the king of all cold weapons. They were long and sharp, easy and versatile to handle, and refined and unique. Ordinary weapons could not compete with them, not to mention that Jacob was unarmed. Prince, let him go this time. We need to hurry and acquire the treasures. Henry's servant advised again. I'm going to poke a hole in him. Henry quickly withdrew his spear and swung it around, then aimed for Jacob's chest. On the other hand, the four young cultivators from the East and West Atlantic were striving so hard to get the treasures in the air that sweat had fully covered their foreheads. Even though they were paying close attention to the fight in the main hall, they had no intention of intervening. After all, a battle between the other two clans could do them no harm. Jacob sent out two bursts of concentrated sword energies from his palm, barely managing to block off Henry's spearhead. Still, with the impact, he immediately had to take five steps backward. The power of a natal treasure could never be taken lightly. However, as Henry was burning with rage and impatience, his spear techniques became chaotic and disorderly. He was unable to win the duel promptly. Noticing that, 
His servant shouted out loudly again, Prince Henry, we need to focus on the big picture and let go of personal grudges now. Shut up! One more word and I will cut you up as well. Henry was losing his patience and collectedness. As soon as a hit missed, he would swing the spear again and keep closing in on Jacob. Therefore, when Jacob had to take five steps backward, Henry immediately took five steps forward. His anger had been fueling since he saw Jacob holding Sophie's hand. Not to mention, he was still upset and furious over the incident at the birthday party last time. Jacob, don't fight him head on. While watching, Sophie warned Jacob worriedly. It was not the treasures that she was worried about, but Jacob's safety. The couple from the East Atlantic had worked collectively and retrieved the first treasure. It was a charcoal-colored rope. The second it was yanked out from the white light veil, it began giving off an extremely powerful aura. Pleasantly surprised, the couple placed the rope around their waist before sending out nature essence unitedly for their second treasure. Henry was filled with envy, yet he still wanted to prove himself and teach Jacob a lesson. As he took his anger out on Jacob, his attacks with the spear became even messier. Jacob now had his back against the wall of the main hall, and Henry's spear was speeding towards his forehead. Prince, you cannot kill him. Working hard on obtaining the black jade flute, Henry's servant saw what was happening and quickly reminded him. I'm going to end him. Henry's eyes had turned bright red due to his urge to kill. Revolving the golden spear smoothly in his hands, he prodded it right towards Jacob's forehead again. As the crown prince of the South Atlantic, he had always done what he pleased. In his eyes, the North Atlantic could not hold a candle to the South Atlantic and should only swallow insults and humiliation quietly. In an instant, Jacob released a few dozen sword energies that he summoned in his palm at once. Like a few dozen mini-missiles, they all exploded on Henry's body. Although his gilded robe had defensive functions, it was not able to withstand the bombing of the five-element sword energies. Several large holes appeared on the robe. Following Henry, under the impact, the golden spear, which was only a few centimeters away from poking into Jacob's forehead, had also backed away. Cheater! Seeing that his robe had been torn, Henry threw his spear right at Jacob forcefully. Shuddered with worries and fears, Sophie couldn't help but start moving closer while she watched. Five elemental sword energy, release! Once again, Jacob's palm released two fierce sword energies. As the sword energies clashed with the spear, the golden spear's power was reduced and it slowed down. Then, Jacob opened the space in his necklace and commanded, Seize! The golden spear entered and disappeared right into Jacob's chest. Although it was Henry's natal treasure, he now could no longer sense the existence of his own spear. At this moment, the siblings from the West Atlantic had also got their very first treasure. Soph, let's go. Jacob dragged Sophie and headed for the door of the palace. Given no time to process what was happening, Sophie could only follow Jacob. Greatly shocked, Henry realized that his natal treasure had been seized by Jacob and immediately began going after him. Prince, it's more important to obtain the treasures here now, his servant called out again. After sprinting forward a dozen steps, Henry finally stopped. Gritting his teeth, he sent out a burst of blue nature essence from his palm, which pierced through the white light veil and began assisting his servant in obtaining the treasures. As they were the first to arrive, they believed they had sufficient time and decided to each work on obtaining one treasure first. Then, they could make time to get the third one together. Judging from their current situation, it would be extremely fortunate if they were able to obtain even one treasure. 
it was almost impossible for them to retrieve the second one. At this moment, Henry was seething with hatred. He had already achieved the third level and had his own natal treasure. Yet, he couldn't even defeat Jacob, who was merely at the second level. Following Jacob out of the palace, Sophie looked at him with doubts. Are we not going to try to obtain the treasures? We need to find elixirs. Acquiring treasures is not what is most important. Tapping the necklace on his chest, Jacob summoned Snowflake. At this time, Snowflake was toying with Henry's golden spear in the space. After jumping out of the space, Snowflake began rolling around on the grass, acting like a spoiled child. Seeing to it, Jacob gently kicked Snowflake in the butt, and it instantly rolled over obediently and became the gigantic snow lion that it was. We still have time to go to the next branch palace. Pulling Sophie with him, Jacob sat on the back of Snowflake and shot out a burst of very faint sword energy to stimulate the fur around its rear, causing Snowflake to let out a growl and fly into the sky at once. With its paws unleashing fire, Snowflake soared freely in the sky. As there was not much time left, Jacob's decision had put everything at stake. If they didn't have Snowflake, he would definitely have stayed at the second palace to try to retrieve a treasure. However, with Snowflake's flying ability, there were more possibilities for them. This time, seated behind Jacob, Sophie was tightly holding onto Jacob's robe as Snowflake tried its best to fly towards the branch palace that was further ahead. Hey, about... She thought for a moment and said in the quietest voice possible, Don't ever do dangerous things again. What do you mean? Jacob asked. Well... Yanking Jacob's robe with her bare hands, Sophie replied, Things like fighting others barehanded and unarmed. Oh, was all Jacob could respond with. He thought more about it and broke into a bright smile. Needless to say, Sophie was not able to see his face as she was seated behind him. Episode 219 one palace to another. How were you able to seize Henry's spear? Sophie inquired again. The space inside my necklace is as big as a room. I can take in 50 or 60 of them, let alone just a single one. Jacob answered with a laugh. Last time, he tried putting the bell he got from the sisters into the space to test it and found that the sisters were not able to detect the bell anymore. From then on, he had thought of another way to make use of the space, just that he hadn't had the chance to try it out until now. Anything that was within a certain range and had nature essence could be seized through mind control. For one, Henry's natal treasure certainly had nature essence, and its size also did not exceed the limit of the space. Therefore, Jacob was able to seize it without a doubt. With that being said... If the opponent were a lot stronger than he was, Jacob would not try to seize things hastily. Even this time, he was lucky to be able to take full advantage of the fact that Henry had no clue what was to come. After all, a natal treasure and its user were connected and could communicate directly. Thus, if Henry suddenly puts his spear away, the space might not be able to suck it in. Watching Snowflake soar in the sky, Jacob felt that he could not take its hard work for granted. Therefore, he took out an elixir pill and placed it in its mouth. While flying high up in the air, Snowflake started chewing the pill. Soon, the flames from its claws were blazing even more fiercely, and its speed had increased considerably. After a short period of flying, 
Snowflake began descending at an angle onto the ground right before the next branch palace. This time, Jacob did not put Snowflake away. Instead, he allowed it to follow behind him and Sophie. Similar to the second palace, two stone beasts were standing in front of the entrance of the palace. The two stone beasts appeared like tortoises, crawling on two humongous hearthstones. This is the sixth branch palace. It stands for immense strength, Sophie stated as she recognized the stone beast. Judging from the look of the stone beasts by the entrance, Jacob estimated that he would find different types of defensive treasures inside the sixth palace. To his surprise, he and Sophie walked into a copious amount of densely placed black-colored stone monuments inside the main hall. All of the stone monuments had carvings of ancient characters that Jacob and Sophie did not recognize. Still, from the lively auras and the titles of the scriptures, they could tell that those were all ancient cultivation techniques. They were, in fact, the long-lost great techniques from the prehistoric era. What should we do? We can't take them with us. Let's memorize them, then. As her eyes lit up, Sophie's voice emitted a sense of urgency. Now that they had finally made it into the next branch palace, there was no way they were leaving empty-handed. Look carefully. These cultivation techniques were not complete. The writing is all in paragraphs, and it seems some key sentences are hidden amongst the stone monuments. We will have to find the pattern to activate the gear somehow. Only then we'll be able to acquire the complete cultivation techniques from the corresponding stone monuments. Jacob lowered his head and watched Sophie. Think you can do it? Sophie responded quickly by frantically shaking her head. It would only waste their time trying to achieve something that seemed impossible. Let's go then. Grabbing her arm, Jacob headed for the door. Sophie could not take her eyes off of the stone monuments, as she was unwilling to leave empty-handed again. I know there's not enough time, but we can still copy down an incomplete one and bring it back to study it. Even when they were already outside, Sophie couldn't help but repeat her suggestion. Let's gamble one more time and see what happens with the next branch palace. Once more, Jacob pulled Sophie onto the back of Snowflake. He, too, understood that there was not much time left. Now, whether they could make it smoothly to the third branch palace and obtain anything useful would be a true test of their attitude and mentality. Otherwise, if they were able to get to three branch palaces in a row, but were unable to obtain anything, it would be a tragedy. After reaching his hand to Snowflake's mouth and feeding it another elixir, Jacob urged Snowflake to fly toward another branch palace that they had once spotted. While they were up in the air, Jacob could see in his view that two more branch palaces were located close together at the far end. If they were given sufficient time, he would have loved to visit them one by one. Snowflake landed abruptly, even leaving a dent in the soil before the entrance of the next palace. On their way there, Snowflake was able to sense Jacob's anxiety. Hence, it landed in a rush and was not as smooth as before. As they expected, there were also two stone beasts situated by the entrance. This time, the two stone beasts looked like two lions firmly seated on two round boards. Moreover, there were engravings of exquisite incense burners adorned all around the round boards. The first branch palace. They again dashed inside the palace. By this time, Jacob had made up his mind. This was their last chance, and they could not afford to be picky. They would grab whatever this palace had to offer. Although it would only take half a minute for them to run into the palace... Jacob appeared so nervous and tense that it looked as though they would have to run for an entire hour. They could sense that there was not much left of the three hours they were granted, 
as they had wasted most of the time traveling to the different locations. Jacob and Sophie realized that they could be expelled by the Nine Dragon Palace any time now. Soon, the view of the main hall finally appeared in Jacob and Sophie's sight. One by one, there was a dazzling display of small cells on the wall, each containing a bottle. Elixir! They found elixirs! The bottles that contained the elixirs were all placed in the cells that were carved out from the wall of the main hall. However, flying on treasures was prohibited in the entire primitive world of the Nine Dragon Palace. Therefore, as they could see, only a few cells that were located at the lowest points on the wall had been visited by their predecessors using various methods. All the other bottles had remained intact inside their respective cells. The fact that flying on treasures was not allowed meant that they were not able to command treasures using nature essence. That was why Henry was utilizing sheer martial art when he attacked Jacob. He threw the spear at Jacob using brute force instead of controlling the spear with his nature essence. What should we do? Sophie turned to Jacob anxiously, as she also seemed to have realized the restriction. The ancient elixirs had filled the entire wall, yet generations of masters before Jacob and Sophie were not able to retrieve them. The surface of the wall was incredibly smooth and slippery that made climbing it impossible. As for the cells located lowest on the wall, they imagined the cultivators at the time were only able to reach those cells by climbing on top of each other. Jacob tapped Sophie's head and said, Don't forget that we've got Snowflake. That's true, Snowflake! Sophie suddenly looked enlightened. Now that we have Snowflake, we can go as high as we want. Since Snowflake's flying ability is its innate power, it shouldn't count as a treasure. Enthusiastically, Sophie locked her gaze on Snowflake. Whereas, widening its innocent big eyes, Snowflake was confused by Sophie's behavior. Snowflake, fly! Sophie directed after she climbed onto Snowflake's back. However... After jumping up a couple of times, only sparks came out of its paws. Snowflake was not able to fly up at all. Looks like it is indeed a special case here. All forms of flying are prohibited. Jacob's brows furrowed. What are we going to do now? Hurry and come up with something. Riding on Snowflake's back, Sophie was so anxious that she almost felt like giving Jacob a beating. Watching so many elixirs displayed before them, it would undoubtedly be heartbreaking if they were not able to obtain any. We can only count on exhausting you and Snowflake then. Jacob sent forward a flash of sword energy with his finger. Go, second row on the left. Episode 220 Ancient Elixir Jacob's sword energy shot at the little bottle on top of the second row as he spoke. Although there were thin layers of array formations outside of the cells, they weren't strong since they were only there to separate the bottles. Jacob's sword energy went through the layers and knocked onto the little bottles, making them shake and fall off the cells. Sophie patted Snowflake and urged, Go catch it, Snowflake. Snowflake ran toward the bottles as Sophie reached out to catch them. She was the main player on her volleyball team, so she was good at catching. The third row on the left, Jacob said as he shot another sword energy. Sophie hastily opened her arms to the side. Snowflake understood what she wanted and moved over a few steps. The sixth row on the left, Jacob shouted again. Snowflake ran over with Sophie on its back. Sophie caught the bottle again and put it in her arms. The fifth row on the right, the eighth row on the right, the fourth row on the left. 
Jacob kept shouting, and Sophie dashed everywhere on Snowflake as if they were fighting a fire. Jacob didn't mean to tire Sophie. He found that he couldn't fully apply his sword shadow scroll in this branch palace. There seemed to be a ton of resistance force. He only knew where the sword energy was heading until he made the shot. Snowflake was exhausted. It ran around the palace with its tongue sticking out. Hold the bottles tight and don't drop them, Jacob reminded Sophie. I know, I know, don't worry. Sophie was busy catching the dropping bottles, and she already had a dozen bottles of different colors in her arms. There was a hint of greed on her face. The entire palace turned pitch black all of a sudden. They sensed the ground shaking. Jacob ran in Sophie's direction in the dark. He felt Snowflake's smooth, fluffy body, and then he grabbed Sophie's arm. Are we dying? Sophie immediately became nervous. Nonsense. This space is not stable, so we might be kicked out at any time, Jacob said as his hand moved up along her arm. Hand those bottles to me so we don't drop them when we get kicked out. Sophie stuffed over 20 bottles into his arms, and he sucked them all into the space in his necklace. Come in, Snowflake. Jacob patted Snowflake. It shrank into the size of two palms and crawled into Jacob's necklace. Sophie and Jacob both felt a little dizzy. Sophie curled up in Jacob's arms from being scared, and Jacob put one of his arms around her waist and the other one around her head. They suddenly fainted. When they slowly came back to their senses, they were already back on the meadow outside of the Nine Dragon Palace where they first began. Helen was looking at them with a smile. They looked around and found that Henry and his servant, the couple from the East Atlantic, and the brother and sister from the West Atlantic had all come out already. Henry held an ancient-looking black flute, East Atlantic's couple got a black rope and a short black dagger, and the brother and sister from West Atlantic got an ugly-looking copper mirror and a wicked-looking staff. Only Jacob and Sophie came out empty-handed, as if they didn't get anything. So, this is the new generation of North Atlantic? It seems like North Atlantic has been training some great talents, Grandmaster Hank taunted. Helen ignored him coldly. In her opinion, it was worth it, since Jacob and Sophie protected and cared about each other during this trip. It could help them bond deeper. She didn't expect them to get anything at all. However, she kept quiet and didn't express her thoughts. Although the elders from the East and West Atlantic said that Jacob and Sophie were still young with a lot of prospects, they secretly looked down at the North Atlantic. Jacob noticed Henry's stare. In order to save his own face, Henry didn't tell anyone, not even his grandfather, that his spear had been taken away by Jacob. However, he was thinking of a way to get his natal treasure back. It seemed like the flute they got was worth it for the South Atlantic to make this trip. However, since Jacob took Henry's natal treasure away, this crown prince of South Atlantic couldn't be that arrogant anymore. The reason being, one, if the natal treasures were even a little damaged while in other people's hands, the owner would suffer damage to his or her mind and spirit. Secondly, it was embarrassing that one's natal treasure was taken by a low-leveled cultivator. If it weren't for Jacob's interference, the South Atlantic could have gotten three treasures. The representatives of four ocean dragon palaces said goodbye to each other. Goodbye, Mrs. Helen. The elders of the East Atlantic and West Atlantic left with the young cultivators. Grandmaster Hank glimpsed at Sophie and then at Helen. He snorted and summoned a jade plate. Then he pulled Henry and the servant onto it and left. The other three dragon palaces all had gotten treasures from the Nine Dragon Palace, so they were all in a rush to get back and learn to use them. 
Let's go. Helen slightly nudged Jacob and Sophie. Although this trip was an extra practice and was earlier than they anticipated, she still felt embarrassed about Jacob and Sophie not getting anything. They stepped onto Helen's River Mountain painting and headed toward the clouds. That magnificent Nine Dragon Palace, which looked like a long-lost ancient city, had already disappeared. It would take a while for them to get to First Heaven from Fifth Heaven. Although they came back empty-handed, North Atlantic got threatened by the other three Dragon Palaces, and the other Dragon Palaces all benefited from this. If the news of Kenneth's heavenly tribulation failure got released, the opening of the Nine Dragon Palace would put the North Atlantic under a lot of pressure. As long as Jacob and Sophie had made improvements, practiced their skills, and bonded from this, everything would be worthwhile. The River Mountain painting went below First Heaven, which was the mortal world. Helen began to speed up and returned to their balcony in a flash that was not visible to an ordinary person. Ah, finally home. Sophie breathed out deeply. They left in the morning, and it was already dusk. An entire day had passed by. Helen put the painting away and entered the house with Jacob and Sophie. Dracon was sitting in the living room, waiting for their news. How did it go? Seeing the three of them walking down the stairs, he couldn't help but ask. It went okay, but we didn't get anything, Helen said. Ah, I thought that would be the case. Although Dracon expected that, he was still a bit disappointed. Helen, actually, we did get something. We just didn't want to take them out in front of the others, Jacob said abruptly. Oh, what did you get? Helen's eyes suddenly lit up. Jacob sat on the living room couch and took a little bottle out of his necklace. Then he carefully put it on the glass table in front of him. Ancient elixir. Helen and Dracon were both amazed. But Jacob slowly took out another bottle. Helen and Dracon were astonished. Then Jacob took out another bottle and put it on the table. Then another one, then another one. Dracon and Helen were both stupefied, even though they had seen many amazing things. It is always better to hide away your wealth. Especially now, the North Atlantic needed to conceal its power and wealth more. Instead of showing off in front of Grandmaster Hank, it was a better idea to hide these elixirs and leave others to believe that they didn't get anything. On the other side, the university's electromechanical engineering professor was complaining. Jacob Brown from the sophomore year is getting more and more ridiculous. It has been a few days since he attended any classes. Professor, don't you think we should give a warning to a student like this? He thinks he can do whatever he wants just because of his connection with Susan. I think we should proceed with the warning. As you said, he skipped classes without any prior notice. Yeah, teach him a lesson. The professor made up her mind as she knocked on the desk. Suddenly, the door was pushed open and the head of their department walked in. Professors, here is a note for you from the vice principal. She took the note and read, Jacob, in your program, has been participating in an important off-campus activity arranged by me lately. He might have to miss a few classes. Please allow on behalf of the program. I wanted to tell you this earlier, but I have been caught up in many things. Vice Principal Liam's signature, as well as a huge red stamp, was at the bottom of the note. 